Well, hello everyone. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar, uh, continuing along the lines of discussion regarding the introduction to ventilator management, specifically uh, making the decision to um, institute mechanical ventilation, and then the initial steps that we have to take to place our patient on mechanical ventilation. So, what we've done so far, we've determined the need for mechanical ventilation. We've talked a little bit about the um, SST and uh, the manual tubing compliance check, if we need to do that. Uh, uh, we've also talked about um, the um, type of ventilation, choosing the type of ventilation. Uh, and primarily in adult, it'll be pressure control versus volume control. And gen as a general rule, we'll start most adult patients out on volume control and then look at transitioning to pressure control at some point um, when certain issues come up that I'll actually talk about in the next set of videos. Uh, that we then talked about the mode selection and it didn't really make a big difference to the initial mode selection as long as the mode that we chose um, would provide full support to an apneic patient and of course all the three most uh, commonly encounter modes uh, CMV, AC and SIMV um, all will provide full support in an apneic patient so uh, selecting e either, either one of those three modes is an appropriate uh, selection for the initial uh, settings we then talked about uh, some of the individual settings, such as the rate, the PEEP, the FiO2, talked a little bit about the um, eye time, talked a little bit about the ID ratio, did a little bit of math there. Also talked about ideal body weight for selecting um, tidal volume. And again, all of those concepts were um, relevant only to the initial setup of mechanical ventilation, or the initiation of mechanical ventilation. We have not yet started talking about uh, what do we, how do we change the settings, modes, uh, types of ventilation, etc. Um, that will be coming up in the next set of videos. All right, and that kind of put takes uh, puts us here in our discussion. When we talk about now, we have all that. We want to go ahead and set up our alarm settings. There are really, um, there are really four basic categories of alarm settings. There's there's the peak pressure, the peak inspiratory pressure, um, setting the high and low pressure. There's a, or a high pressure, low pressure alarm. There's two of those. And then you have the high and low volume alarms, and this can be minute ventilation and um, tidal volume alarms. Um, that's that's the, the, the third set of alarms. And then, and then of course, we have um, the apnea parameters. So let's go ahead and just talk about setting the high pressure alarm real quick. Uh, this is an alarm, basically the ventilator will alarm and let us know that the peak inspiratory pressure has uh, exceeded some set limit. Where do we initially set our peak inspiratory pressure? Um, it's difficult because we don't really know every patient going to be different. We don't know how our patient is going to be. So uh, what I what I look at is I go, well, we, we try to, we want to kind of keep our, our airway pressures under 30 to 35 if possible. Uh, obviously there's going to be considerations for different types of patients. Uh, but initially what I'll do is, is set my alarm for around my, uh, or I'll, I'll, I'll say, well, if my patient, in an average patient, I don't really want to go much over 30, what I'll do is I'll say, okay, well, let's just assume that my patient's going to be right at 30 or so. Just make that assumption, even though that may or may not be true. And then what I'll do is I'll set my initial alarms for 10 above and 10 below that, that, um, that, that magical 30 and I'll set my high alarm at 40 centimeters of water and then I'll set my low alarm at 20. Now we 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 do that with the real recognition or realization that we may need to modify that substantially when we actually place our patient on the ventilator but that's kinda what I do is I kinda look you know maybe you could even say 20 it, you know your average patient will be around 20 set your high pressure for 30 your low pressure for 10 um, e either way, you know, you want to set 10 above, 10 below what you think the patient might be doing and then modify that when you actually put the patient on the ventilator. Um, that's a high and low pressure alarm. You also have your high and your low, um, we'll talk about the tidal volume alarms. And what I do with the tidal volume alarms is I look at what my mandatory um, tidal volume is, say 500 milliliters, and then I'll set my high and low alarms uh, for 100 above and 100 below. Uh, whatever I have my uh, tire volume set at. And of course, you know, there are all kinds of different conditions we can talk about, or maybe you have, you know, leaks and, and things of that nature where you may may need to modify those settings. Again, we're just talking about the initial 
uh, we're talking about initiating mechanical ventilation, the initial, initial alarm. So let's say I have my patient on a volume of 500 milliliters, then I'll go ahead and set um, my high for 600 and then my low for 400. And again, with a caveat that I may have to modify the, those alarms at some, some time. Uh, the next set of alarms we'll talk about are will be the high and low minute ventilation alarms. And what I generally do with the minute ventilation is I'll set, uh, I'll find out what their minute ventilation is, um, and then I'll set my high alarm, my low alarm for 10 to 15 percent above that and below that. Um, I, I'll generally go 10 percent because the math is a lot easier. So let's say that my patient's on 500 milliliters a minute, and they're taking 10 breaths a minute. So uh, VE minute ventilation equals respiratory rate times tidal volume. So the respiratory rate in this case is 10 breaths a minute, the tidal volume of 500 milliliters of breath. So how many liters per minute does it give me? Well, it's 500, 1,000, that's one liter, uh, 1,500, two, 2,500, okay, that's five breaths. Another 2,500 for another five breaths, it gives me 10 breaths a minute, it gives me five liters. Or you can just simply do the math in your head and go 500 times 1,000 milliliters. That gives me 5,000 milliliters. And uh, that 5,000 milliliters, of course, can be converted to 5 liters. Okay, so our minute ventilations, a mandatory minute ventilation set of 5 liters per minute. Well, what's 10% of 5 liters? Well, that's just 500 milliliters or 0 0.5 liters. Again, having good knowledge of the metric system would be very helpful in a lot of this math because it's simply just a matter of moving your decimal point back, backwards or forward. So 10% of 5 liters is 0 0.5 liters. If it was 6 liters, it'd be 0 0.6 liters or 600 milliliters. If it was 7 liters, it'd be 0 0.7 or 700. 8, 0.8, 800, 9, 0 0.9, 900. 10 liters a minute would be 1,000 or 1 liter. Um, it would be 10%. So the math is, is fairly intuitive and fairly easy. So what I'll do is I'll set, let's go back to that 5 liters per minute. I'll go ahead and set um, <clears throat> my high minute ventilation alarm uh, for 5.5 liters, right? I'll add that 500 milliliters, and 500 milliliters is 0.5 liters. So 5.5 for my high, and then 4.5 for my low, 500 milliliters below that. And again, I may have to modify that um, significantly depending on the patient. So uh, don't get too wrapped up around.